Hello everyone and welcome to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce and today we're doing another Women of Horror Spotlight. Today I have with us, she's wearing multiple hats in the new movie that's called Body Count. And she is the director of the first segment, actress, writer, producer. There's a lot going on. Editor. Oh, I edited a lot of it too. Oh, editor too. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank have you. with us Jennifer Jennifer Nangle. Jennifer, welcome to the Horror Room. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Now I've had the privilege of watching the screener of Body Count. It's a fun movie. Tell my audience a little bit about it. Yeah, so I am a horror hostess on YouTube. I am Malvolia, the Queen of Screams, where I showcase uh, indie horror short films along with skits. And over the years, we've kind of developed a, a cast of minions with Malvolia. And so we wanted to kind of expand and reach a greater audience. And so I decided to make a female villain driven horror anthology. So all of the segments in the horror anthology are female villain driven and i play all the villains in all of the segments and uh, malvolia kind of hosts where she is in the wraparound with all of her cast of characters and it's called body count because throughout the movie we just raise the body count <laughs> love it so what got you into horror uh, I always uh, had horror around me growing up. I grew up in a small town called Danvers, which is right next to Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, Danvers was part of Old Salem Village, so it was part of the witch trials. So uh, horror has always been a part of my life. Uh, my dad is a huge horror fanatic. My grandmother is a huge horror fanatic. Um, it was not rare for us to like sit around the table during like a holiday dinner and talk about like Anne Rice or Universal uh, Monsters or the latest horror movie. And um, I guess it's just always been in my blood, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> now, you started off with a YouTube channel. Uh, as a YouTube creator as well, uh, YouTube to, to be a YouTube creator is it's pretty challenging. Oh, absolutely. So uh, wh what has your experience been? Oh my gosh, it's the toughest thing ever. It is the most difficult thing ever. In fact, I wasn't even supposed to be around this long because uh, what originally was the idea for Malvolia was um, I wanted to make a found... Uh, found footage horror movie based around a horror hostess and um I was kind of going through like a Blair Witch Project moment and I was like well what if I make her real and what if I have an audience and what if I already have a fan base when the movie comes out and all oh, that'll be appealing to like everybody and so I was like let's just make a quick YouTube uh series and uh just kind of showcase what this horror hostess is about and then we can make the movie and then we can be done but what happened was as soon as I kind of unveiled her and I I got together with a couple of horror bloggers um we took this badass picture um and so we kind of caused quite a ruckus and people were like really into her and they liked her and they were interested in her and i was like oh we can't just end this like after eight episodes <laughs> like we have to keep going <laughs> and so the movie got nixed and here we are um i'm almost like uh I kind of skipped a season this past year because I was so involved with body count. So I'm moving into season seven and, um, you know, just here we are <laughs> trying to come up with more ideas to put out there, find more filmmakers to showcase and just keep the ball rolling. <laughs> Cause I mean, it's an interesting thing, you know, we're both indie horror YouTube creators as well. And and like it's and anybody who starts a YouTube channel, I always say you got to find what your niche is. And you kind of have to just stick with it. Yeah. And you got to ride it out because I mean, yeah, this could be this going to be those those first couple of months where you, you're like, how come nobody's watching my shit? Like, what's going on? No one's subscribing. I think I well, barely just I barely just got like a thousand subscribers, so I totally feel you on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like like because I tell people I'm like, oh, I got monetized my first year. They're like. What, most people don't do that, but like I, but but if you, but if you knew the amount of hours that you put into YouTube when it comes to you know doing the interviews, the editing, just planning, it's gonna, it's a lot, it's a lot. 
And, and what I was doing was I was editing, I mean, granted, one of my episodes is just like an intro outro. So I take, I take the indie film and I put a beginning and an end towards it. And that's easily uploaded and put out into the universe. But what uh, the second episode that we were doing during the week was like a, a little mini skit. So, you know, we had different characters. We were film, we filmed in my apartment. Um, we were, and I had to like edit all of this stuff together, you know, sound, editing, music and everything. So it's, it is a lot of work and I cannot be monetized. So <laughs> I'm not, I'm not monetized. Well, listen, I, 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 I'm a subscriber of your YouTube channel. It is a fun channel, by the way, go down into the description link and go ahead and subscribe and check out our channel. It is <laughs> a fun time. Thank you. So, all right. So you, you, you got your YouTube channel and then you decide, you know what? I want to start really embracing. I want to start writing i want to start producing i want to start directing how did you make that jump oh i was doing all of that beforehand i um i also have a personal uh youtube channel it's at jennifer nangle and i was doing a lot of horror shorts um there was a big popular film festival called the 15 second horror short uh competition where you had to make like a 15 second horror film i did like two or three of those um a friend of mine was like i need something for my reel so we ended up uh shooting a short film and it actually went viral so that was pretty awesome so i was doing a lot of that before i stumbled upon the malvolia stuff but the reason i started self-producing was because i live in los angeles and I don't know if you all know this, but I live with a bunch of other actors and directors and filmmakers. I mean, they're everywhere here. So it's here. kind of, <laughs> it's kind of difficult to stand out. So um, I was, and, you know, going to auditions, numerous auditions, not booking anything. I mean, you go to casting calls and there was like a thousand people, probably not exactly a thousand people, but it felt like a thousand people that were there and you're looking around the room and all these girls are looking exactly like me. And it's like, how are they going to choose? And so I was getting really bored. I was, I really wanted to create. I wanted to act. That is my passion. That is my love. And so that's why I started self-producing and writing and the whole shebang. <laughs> Cause I can imagine it's hard to break through as a new actor or actress in indie horror. And it doesn't sound like it'll be the heart, but like if you watch indie horror, you see the same individuals in the movies. Like there's certain individuals you know that you go you watch any indie horror movie, you know you're gonna see certain individuals. I so, feel like that's been more of a recent thing. But yes, you are correct. Yes. I agree. Yes. yes. And and like, you know, so like and, and I've always attached indie horror. You think about indie horror, that's where you know no name actors and actresses were able to break through. That's that's where they were able to start off at. But it just seems like it's so hard for if you don't if you're not already established right now in indie horror, it's it's almost hard to get in. Um, I agree and also disagree. I think that it is a pretty competitive situation right now. There are a lot of people that are going to their go tos over and over and over again. Um, but that doesn't mean that somebody can't show up and show what they have in their talents and break through that. Um, they just have to have like the passion and the will and the drive to do it. Um, there are a lot of people that are given a lot of things and they are not appreciative of it. I feel like the people that are appreciative of it, they make something with it and they will continue on and they will, they can break through those kind of situations or statistics or whatever. <laughs> 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 Forgive me, I work today and my yeah. brain's a little numb. <laughs> you're good, you're good. All right, now, what were some horror movies that inspired you? Oh my gosh, um, Psycho. Uh, I'm a huge Great. Alfred Hitchcock fan, you know? Um, the The movie that I always go to if I'm like you know, having writer's block or I'm kind of stagnant or I'm, I'm just not feeling anything as I go to the ruins. The ruins is like my ultimate favorite horror movie. I feel like every time I watch that, I learn something new. I discover something new. I see something new. Um, it's a very intricate, but also simplistic 
kind of film idea. And I know it was a book before and I've never read the book, but um, that should be, yeah, that should be on my, my, my list. But um, yeah, that's, that's definitely one of them. Um, I mean, Blair Witch Project. Come on now. Love that, oh, yeah. I love Blair Witch. Yeah. I remember when it came out and people were like leaving the theater and they thought it was like real and they were like, are these people missing and how they played the game with that. I love that. I love the whole idea of that. I think it's fantastic. Um, you know, the ring, the, the, the ring scary shit. The, yeah. the original, the original and the remake. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw that in the theater and I, I said it many times, it felt like the woman was coming out. She was coming at you. Screen, yeah. And it was terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the Japanese one? Japanese? I have. Asian? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's called Ringo. I believe. Ring, Ringu, Ringo, Ringu, Ringu. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm all about that. Now, uh, okay, now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna dive into some some horror questions for you. Now, right. right now, there's 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 some great new indie and you know big budget horror movies coming out. I, I feel like there's kind of resurgence of horror. Man, I mean, you, you look at Barbarian. And even like the X series, A twenty four is definitely killing it right now. One hundred, yeah. Yes. Now, do you think? Now, one thing about horror genre, it does this: it goes down and up and down. And up. Do you think we're coming close to that down point right now? What's the down point? Is it that it's not as like, popular, or the story well, isn't as good? Well, like for instance, Blair Witch. Project right, Blair Witch Project was revolutionary. It it was like the first horror. Well, it was the first big name yes. horror feature that got noise, and then for like a good five years, we got nothing but uh, knockoffs of Blair Witch, and we got the same thing with Scream. It, it, and horror does that when 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 they hit someone, knocks it out of park. Then for about five years, we get the same thing over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. But right now, for it seems like the last couple of years, we've been getting some great original content. Yeah. Are you afraid that we're going to go into that zone again where we, like Hollywood always does, where we start repeating ourselves with those great original contents? Um, let's be honest. Uh, Hollywood is terrified of a lot of things. Um, people are afraid to lose money, and therefore they will always go back to remakes. Uh, they'll always go, they'll always go back to these kind of things. So it's just a, you know, ticking time bomb when that happens again. But I think the in, independent world, and I mean like the real independent, because yeah. there's, there's independent, there's A24, and then there's us that are yeah. still like hungry and we're creating all these like really cool, crazy amazing stories so i feel like we're always going to be stable we're always going to be there but hollywood's probably going to drop at some point however i mean horror is pretty easy to make if you have like one location and there are a lot of studios and places that are, are just looking for like a horror movie one location and they have no problem throwing money at that so it kind of just depends it just kind of depends on like what scripts are out there what is piquing the interest what people are picking up kind of thing now, when it comes to indie horror, I'm a huge indie horror fan. I mean, we're going all the way back to the full moon days. Mm -hmm. but, but now, it's, it's, which is a great thing, like, it's a, we're getting so much with like streaming services like Tubi and Plex, we're getting access to a lot of indie horror movies and filmmakers that we normally wouldn't know about, probably see, especially since the video stores are going out. Yeah. And with technology being so affordable and being amazing, you know, he, any not anybody, but people can now make great movies and put it out there. Are you afraid that over a while, I mean, after a while, that's going to saturate the indie horror market? I think it already has. I mean, any anybody can pick up a camera, and I mean, we have we have cameras constantly. We have we have cameras with us all the time. So I mean, people are already taking advantage of that opportunity, and um, I think it's already there. I think it's already happening. I mean, the things that people are creating is kind of crazy and out there. 
but they also don't have like a producer breathing down their neck being like, no, you can't do that. Or we need to write, rewrite the ending or anything like that. Like people are doing what they want to do and they're putting it out there. So I, I feel like it's already there. However, I did hear that Tubi is kind of like backing down on taking other projects and really focusing on making their own stuff. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah, I heard it. There's a That's site. A shame. <laughs> I mean, That's they'll probably they'll probably still accept, you know, films and stuff like that. But I I think that in the very near future they're going to be very choosy, yeah. and um, because they want to they want to do their own stuff. It's just like Netflix. It's just like Amazon Prime. Like the and and it is disappointing because we look to these sites to like really help us and and ex- give us that exposure. But at the same time, it's like. Okay, now they have to they have to grow and they're moving and they have to think about their own revenue and all that kind of stuff. So I don't think that they'll stop collecting movies or or accepting certain movies, but I think it's it's going to be very limited. Yeah. Now, do, do you miss the video store days and physical me- media like DVDs? Oh my god! Like yes, dead? yes, I loved go. Oh my gosh, this is showing my age, but I loved going to Blockbuster. <laughs> You know, you had like the two day rental, so you had to like really yeah. go home and like watch it and then return it by noon the next day or something like that. Like, I really miss those days. Um, you know, sometimes you would pick up like really bad duds, sometimes you would pick up yes. like these movies that you'd never heard of that just like you know inspired you and just made your night. Um, That's made it fun, yeah. And this, do you remember the smell, the smell of going yes. in there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, like it was amazing. And you would pick a movie just off of the like horror movie off of the box cover, like mm-hmm, if, if mm-hmm. you like, and you're like, what the fuck is this? Oh, yep. I gotta get this, like you know, and like it introduced you to movies that you probably wouldn't see before. And, totally, and that that's how indie horror movie creators were able to you know get so popular and get their process out there because of the video store age. Yeah, yeah, and film festivals, but yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. <laughs> It is sad. I miss those it is days. Sad. It's sad. I mean, even DVDs are gone, like, now. So I'm, like, no. I'm still selling DVDs and Blu-rays if you want a copy of Body Count, though. <laughs> and that website is down in the description. <laughs> so, um, Body Count. Now, this is a, and look, you see, this is an anthology, a female-driven anthology. So how were you able to get this group of creators together? Well, everybody that um, directed a piece uh, or or one of the segments has, I've already worked with. So one of the directors was Hunter Johnson. He was a part of Malvolia since, you know, she was born. She was created since season one. Um, Richard Trejo, he was um, the DP on pretty much season one through season four or five or something like that. Um, and he directed a segment. Uh, I've worked closely with Alex Wang, who did um, who did one of the segments. And then that's three. I did one. Who am I forgetting? <laughs> See, they're going to get you now. Oh, my God. Hunter, Richard, Alex. That's three. I did one. The wraparound. Who am I forgetting? Okay, anyway, yes, um, so everybody that I work, who am I forgetting? Am I forgetting somebody? Um, anyway, uh, I've worked with everybody. <laughs> oh, God, I'm the worst. I'm the worst. <laughs> oh, they're going to be in the comments lighting you up. <laughs> but all the writers, too. Um, yeah. uh, Charles Chudabala, he, uh, he's my best friend. I mean, he was part of Malvolia season one. Um, Ron Perd uh per t he um i've worked with him on other stuff um I, I i acted in one of his segments he's written for me a couple of times um eric uh lawson he is a friend of one of the actors that's in the in the movie so that's how i met him he sent me a couple of his scripts and we were trying to get one off the ground and he saw that i was looking for a female driven uh short film and so he wrote holly hatchet specifically for this and um christine twyman she's a friend of a friend um and uh i i really 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 wanted a female writer besides 
me on this project. So um, that's that's how I got connected with. Uh... No, it's just the four of us. I was right. I was right. There's oh, okay, good. <laughs> for the directors, but um, Christine, I really wanted another female uh, creative, another female writer on the on the um, film. So yeah, I was able to get connected with her. So that's how we we all kind of met. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Now, as a now as a filmmaker and a creator, is it hard for you to look? Because you know, you grow each project. You grow. You grow. You learn more. Is it hard for you to go back and watch some of your early stuff? I never do. So probably yes. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, either, I don't either. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to watch my, my, my first couple of videos. Um. Yeah, like I, I don't, I do not go down the rabbit hole for Malvolia. Um, I, I love the Halloween specials. If you want to watch anything Malvolia, go straight to the Halloween specials because they are, they are a ball. They're a lot of fun. But as far as like the other segments, I really don't watch them. I don't. No, I just, yeah, go to the 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 real produced stuff that we've done um but as far as shorts i mean i could if if you guys venture onto my channel i mean i could watch the deal over and over again i could watch that night over and over again i had really great times making those those short films and um yeah but no not the not the hosting of Melvolia. no 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 <laughs> Because, because I mean, there's some filmmakers that will say, you know, whatever their first or second film was, they're like, yeah, I try not to watch those movies or rewatch the movies because, like, you know, I just know, you know, I'm such a tough critic of myself, and I'll just be picking it apart the whole entire time. But I'm like, at the same time, maybe that's actually helpful. I mean, that that might help you grow. Oh my gosh, it absolutely does. I mean, like I said, I edited like eighty. 9% of body count and if I could go back and do a lot of things I would um I mean being the creator I was always on set and I was always trying to be behind the camera when I wasn't acting to cr try and like watch a lot of the stuff and make sure that everything made sense everything kind of flowed into one another how we would make all these things work um but I mean, there there definitely is a lot of stuff that if I if I had the budget to like I I made body count off of like four thousand dollars, and I know people are like, oh, that's four thousand dollars, but that's actually like really hard in Los yeah. Angeles. I called like a whole bunch of favors, you know, everybody worked for free. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, if I had a bigger budget, I would definitely do things different. Yeah. If somebody gave you an additional fifty thousand dollars to add to your budget, what's one thing that you would have added? Oh my gosh! Look, I would have been able to get locations that I wanted. The wraparound um, was the reason the wraparound is the way that it was was because I didn't have any. I was at zero money. I was actually taking money out of my own personal pocket to kind of pay for things, and um, a uh, a. a, a a really nice man in San Diego let me use his ranch for like pennies. And so that's why we, we did the wrap around the way that we did. Originally it was supposed to take place in a police precinct and Malvolia was arrested and like all of these like really paranormal, supernatural things were happening in the precinct that she was, you know, telling these stories about the body count and stuff like that. But I didn't, I didn't end up having that money. So yeah, I would totally do that. Body count too. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody wants to donate fifty thousand, I'm joking. Yeah, um, call yeah. me up. <laughs> All right, so, Jennifer, you notice know, it's a horror channel, so I'm going to ask you three random horror questions. You ready? Oh God, I'm nervous. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Oh, these are fun ones. Are okay, okay, okay. There's no right, right or wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What is one horror movie that everybody? talks about like oh my god it's so great it's so iconic and you're like i don't see it oh man i'm so bad at these like question and answer things because i just never know um a lot of the amnivilles <laughs> and i'm i'm in a couple a lot of, of them bad. a lot of them are pretty bad mm. wait which ones are you in i'm curious I'm in Amneville Karen. I am in. Karen. I had not seen that one. I've seen the poster, but I haven't seen it. 
Yeah, I uh, I think I was a last minute like add on. I think they had like an actor drop and because I, I got the call like a week or two before they were supposed to start start shooting and I got the script like two days before and I had paragraph after paragraph after paragraph and I'm like oh my god okay but we were able to do it I had a lot of fun it was a lot of fun um but You're yeah it, I was not Karen no okay I was the drunk at the wine what well, it takes place at a winery it's about um uh possess possessed possessed wine uh, <laughs> and i'm the drunk at the winery that tells the, like the whole backstory of how the wine became possessed and stuff um i'm in amityville karen i'm in amityville in the hood and then i'm in the upcoming amityville apartments <laughs> oh i see you laughing yeah there's amityville there's apartments Amity <laughs> All right, so I, I, I'm writing this down now. I gotta watch this one. I think it's on Tubi. <laughs> I play Amityville prostitute. The hood. I yeah. Did not, I did not know that was such a thing. Oh I mean, yeah. I, I saw Amityville uh, zombies. Amityville. Yes, and yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll oh. sit through the Amityville with Ryan Reynolds any day but all the other amityvilles i'm like <laughs> <laughs> who is okay who is one actor or actress that you had a privilege to work with that you were like wow this is so fucking amazing okay it wasn't so fucking amazing in the beginning but it turned out to be so fucking amazing it was vernon wells um i got to work with vernon wells on a um horror anthology called Lewis that was directed by Alex Wang and then um, we also are in another movie called uh, Mothman versus Bigfoot that still hasn't come out yet um, but everybody was okay so I um, wasn't like a huge movie enthusiast like growing up I was more like TV like you know Dawson's Creek I wanted to be on Beverly Hills Night or two and no like that was my jam like when I was growing up right so um I didn't really delve into a lot of these other movies and so um there was rumors that Alex was still casting for Lilith and I'm like I want I want to be in Lilith like I want to I want to do it I want to I want to um be a part of this horror anthology and um my friend Charles was I think producing or helping Alex in some way she performed and he's like I pitched you for this one segment and you'll be working with Der Vernon Wells and I was like this Vernon Wells I don't I don't know mm -hmm. everybody was like freaking out and I went to my boyfriend and I was like who's Vernon Wells? And he's like, you have no idea who Vernon Wells is? And I'm like, no. He's like, Commando. I'm like, no idea. So we sat and we watched Commando and I, I totally learned everything about Vernon. And it came day, the time to when we were going to be shooting. And um, I wasn't nervous because I didn't really realize like who he was or how big it was, how big he was and all this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, we got through the day and he and I ended up having so much fun together. We um, we really worked off of one another. We had a, a really good time acting opposite of one another. And um, he's just such a delight. Like I saw him at uh, Son of Monster Palooza a couple months ago and I visited him at his table and he just gives me like the biggest hug and he's just like so sweet and just so lovely. And um, yeah, so I got to work with Vernon Wells and it turned out being so cool <laughs> that's a great story, that's a great story. yeah <laughs> and the final question who is your favorite final girl who is your favorite final girl oh god probably Sid sydney's prescott from scream sydney is a great one sydney is my number two yeah who's your number one laurie strode i mean oh laurie strode, I think. my bad yeah. my bad <laughs> For the, from the original, the right? Yes, 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 yes. I, actually, I would, I would, I would take her from the original. I, would, I like Laurie Strode from Part One. And I like Laurie Strode from H Two O. Believe it or not. Oh yeah. And I will, and I would also take Laurie Strode from two thousand eighteen. Really? Mm -hmm. hmm. I don't want no. Laurie Strode from Ends. I don't want Laurie Strode from Part the original Part Two. I don't want Laurie Strode from. Kills. Rob Zombie remakes. Oh, I don't want the. I oh, see it. It's gonna be. Ah! <laughs> Maybe I should be. Yes. Interviewing. Yes. Now. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Scott 
Or Taylor, yes, I'll take her too. But no. <laughs> Nobody has to see this. You can edit this out. We're editing this out. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But she's, she's so nice. Like, I've, I met her on several occasions. She's so nice. Yeah. I think she did a. I think she did her job in those movies. But I just wasn't a fan of the Rob Zombie. Nothing's like the OGs. You know, like, yeah, yeah I got you. Nothing personal, yeah, yeah. Scout. Nothing personal. Yeah. Nothing personal. <laughs> Nothing personal. But, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis is my Lori show. I mean, yep. Yeah. Yeah, number one final girl for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer, where can everyone find you? All right. You can follow me at Queen Malvolia on all the socials, but I'm going to be honest with you. I never really log into X. So don't get mad at me if I don't follow oh back or like retweet. <laughs> okay. I was trying to be PC, but here we go. Okay. We're being honest. Uh, no X, Nobody but <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, um, or I am at Jennifer underscore Nangle on Instagram, or you can find me on Facebook, uh, Jennifer Nangle. Yeah. Great. And go to the description too. Her YouTube channel is right there. So make sure to like, subscribe, comment, watch, all that good stuff. Please. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Jennifer, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. You, you don't got me in trouble because I feel like I'm going to run into Scout and she's gonna, she's gonna be haunting you in your nightmares tonight. Fucking asshole! And I'm I'm sorry, like, ah, ah. you know I'm not really Talk about Jamie Lee Curtis, motherfucker. You know. <laughs> I plead the fifth. I'm not a part of this. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure having you on. Listen, everybody. Like I say, go to a YouTube channel and also look out for a body count. Yeah. And also too, and go to be. With me and go watch Emdyville in the hood. And Emdyville Karen. Karen and, and what was part Amityville Apartments is probably coming soon. <laughs> uh, let's watch it. Listen, I'm watching Hoods. That's uh, I'm locked in. Yeah. So, done. Uh, I want to see what Emdyville <laughs> in the hood looks like. That's how we roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank everyone. you so much for having me. Appreciate being here. It was a pleasure, <laughs> pleasure. Everyone, thank you for coming to the horror room. I'm Travis Bruce. See I'm Jennifer time. Nagel. <laughs> She's Jennifer Nagel in the hood. See you next time. <laughs>